Hi and welcome to Astronical. In this episode we're going to look at this heartbeat sensor or the problems that some people have had with it. Over the various videos from the original video that I did um, almost two years ago now, there have been occasional reports of it not quite performing as I, you would expect and I've tried to solve the problems and in most cases, um, well in some cases, we've been success, unsuccessful in solving that problem. And then about a week or so ago somebody left a comment saying that they wanted to wanted it to work with the SP32, it wasn't quite working and I thought it was something to do with the fact that the Arduino is 5 volts and the SP32 is 3.3 volts so we may have to make some adjustments for that. However, so I, I did say actually I, I would look into it, but however when I looked into it there then came up a problem. So if we look at these two sensors, they look identical, one's connected up to the SP32 I mean, they're not identical, but look almost identical. One says nothing on it, one other one says, says pullsensor.com. And if we turn them over, the circuitry is, to all intents and purposes, identical. Let's get that into the better lighting. To all intents and purposes, it's identical. However, if you look, although the layout and circuit seems to be identical, the type of components used are definitely different between this one and this one with slightly different types of resistors and other surface mount components. Question is, does that make a difference? Both of these sensors, I must add, are very, very cheap ones, which I got off AliExpress. Uh, there are other uh, foreign retailers like Banggood that uh, sell very similar things. And I've never really had a problem with them. This one was new out of the packet. I mean, I couldn't find this one, I've just misplaced it. It was on another project, I just misplaced it. So I had one brand new and never used in a packet that I'd ordered, I think. I don't know, I'm guessing a little bit, four to, between three and six months ago, something like that. So I tried to hook this up and I had problems. It wasn't quite working. In fact, it was doing exactly what this person had said it was doing. And I thought, oh, it's still something to investigate with the SP32 and but then it started, to, when I was investigating it further, it just didn't seem to be, whatever I tried wouldn't make much difference. So then I went looking for my old project, which I knew definitely worked, and I pulled out this sensor, and lo and behold, it performed perfectly. Same setup, same program, I'm just swapping out the sensors. This one performs perfectly, this one does not. I'll show you, what, I'll show you how they perform in a minute, but it would seem that, Depending on what you get, you can get a working one or a non-working well one. And I don't blame the supplier of this particular one. They're just probably buying them in bulk from some other bulk supplier eventually who's, who's got it from some sort of whatever factory somewhere. And I think it just it's random bad luck. I mean, I think one person a few months ago ordered another one, but obviously either from the same supplier or whatever, so I suggest that it could be faulty. And indeed it is technically faulty. That's what the problem is. These sensors, it seems like there's a batch going about that are faulty. Because this is one, and this isn't. This works perfect. There's nothing else changed about for me apart from me swapping this sensor in and out of the circuit. And one works perfectly, and one doesn't. And as I say, I can't blame the, the seller. I don't think they'd know really which one was good and which one was bad. So let's uh, hook up the computer, and we'll show you what happens when we're actually checking them out. Now this is the code that I'm using. It's available on my website for the Heart Pulse Sensor Project. And it's just simply reading the analog input, whether it's an Arduino or this ESP32 we've got here. And it's feeding that back via the serial port to the computer. So we'll just plug it in. And that's just registered with the computer. And then if, if we go to tools and serial plotter if you use serial monitor all we'll get back is the raw numbers and it can be hard to interpret what's going on there so what you want is a serial plotter and that will give us like a simple plot of the numbers coming back which apparently which will come out like a simple trace so that's the raw results coming back and I take this code works whether it's an Arduino or ESP32 doesn't matter so I'm going to put my finger on the actual sensor and at the moment it doesn't look brilliant I'll just get the actual pressure just stay in. Because it'll scale itself when the bigger values go off screen. 
So as it goes to the left, when these big ones go off the screen now, it'll rescale. There we go. And you can see the heart trace. Especially if I stop, stop moving my hand. Quite clear. And you look at the range of values from the bottom to the top. It's around about 100 to 150. Sometimes 200 from the lowest value we're getting back to the highest value. And the software I wrote, you know, uses that. You need a reasonable range to be able to sort of work out what's noise and what is actually a heart trace. And that's what we're expecting to see, and that's what I've always seen, apart from these people reporting problems with their sensors. And it was never quite easy to get down to the bottom of it. So let's plug in the other one. So we'll take that one off, and we'll see the trace we get back off that one. Double check the connections. Yeah, that's going to be fine, just plugged in there. Okay, I need to restart the monitor to sort of like, sort of crash it a little bit. And let's go back into the monitor, and in the plotter, sorry, not the monitor. And yeah, so I'll just let go of that, and you can see we've got a very, very small trace, which is fine when we're not receiving anything. So let's put my finger on, and see what we get, what sort of range of values we get off here. And again, we'll just let it settle down a bit. And when them big ones go off the screen, it'll rescale to whatever it's picking up off my finger, which is going to happen very shortly. And we can see we've got something that looks like a heartbeat trace. But if we look, if it can get stabilised a little bit. If you look at the range of values going there from about 590 to about 610, that's only about 20. And in previous tests when I've been doing this, I'm getting, it's been as low as 10. And with a lot more noise on it, that's it showing now. But even then, what looks a big trace, it's only got a range of a bit about just below 590 to 620. We could try messing about with the code to see if we can get any sort of reasonable sort of like, see lots of noise there. That's, that noise on top of them peaks, it's almost impossible to pick up or filter out that and get a decent trace. Us as humans, it's quite easy for us to look at that, we can sort of pick out the trace. A little bit more complex than that in software, and even then, as I say, it's susceptible to a lot more noise than the other sensories with that bigger range. So for those people that are having problems and you're getting these problems where you've got a very low result coming back, very low low variance, very little change in the in the minimum and top sensor values, it, it seems to be just random look as to which sensor you're going to get. Some of them don't seem to be very good. There's nothing I can do about that. You could try playing with the code a little bit, but it would probably give you very inconsistent results. So, all I can say is maybe move away from that sensor. Look at my pulse and oxygen sensor, which is a lot more reliable, a lot more robust, and is the kind of sensor they use in smartwatches to actually monitor your heart rate and things as you're running, jogging, whatever, sitting down. Um, unless you strike it lucky and get one of the decent sensors. I mean, I, I could recommend that maybe you go to, rather than going to one of the cheap suppliers in the Far East, which is where I get virtually all my stuff from, that maybe you go to a more reputable supplier, maybe like Adafruit or a Spark Fund or something like that. I wouldn't even trust eBay, not as in they're doing anything wrong. They're not trying to sell you a defective product. I think wherever this has been made at the factory, it could be just one massive rogue batch that's out there, I don't know. There's certainly a few out there, because I've had various people report back with problems. Um... They, they wouldn't know whether they've got a bad batch. They personally bought a hundred of or a thousand of whatever they buy them in bulk cars. So maybe if you went to a more reputable supplier, you might get a better sensor. Uh, but if you're getting it from the Far East, in this occasion, it, it could be a bit hit and miss. So that's all for now. I know that's not going to be good news for a lot of people who have had this problem and certainly for the person I've been communicating with over the last week or so on this problem. Um, but that's the way it is, so yeah, maybe try the pulse and oxygen sensor. So that's all for now. If you'd like to see more content, please subscribe. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up.